Hello everybody, it is Puka, it is Tom Nesbitt, 44th annual Labor Day shootout, Hibbing Raceway, doing our annual uh, interview with Tom, kind of catching up. Uh, this interview being brought to you by The Bottle Shop in Hibbing, so whenever you're in Hibbing and you need liquor, especially you race fans, uh, right by Holiday Gas Station, Taco John's out on the highway, head west there on 25th, get to the T, the bottle shop's right there. It's owned by Marcus and Jenny Damianovich, racers themselves. So that's the place to go for your bush latte and all your liquor needs when you are in Hibbing. So here he is, the legend himself, Tom Nesbitt. So Tom hails from Thunder Bay, Ontario. And like we were just talking, racing is now back in Thunder Bay. It's back really big. There are record crowds every, every, and they're getting more and more people every Wednesday night to the races. And B-Mod numbers, what, close to 30? Uh, there's a night, but there's probably 50 so registered. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. In the time, in the area. And they're getting 30 to 35 or three every night. Every, they run Wednesdays. Yeah. And, uh, the crowds have been record. They just keep getting more and more every Wednesday. Oh, that's great news. It's been oh, a long yeah. time. It's been a long time. Well, Mosquito Speedway was there. When did that close? Well, Mosquito opened up my, my cousin and his friend they op they built mosquito out in it's 18 miles out of town and they they ran, ran sundays after riverview closed down they were successful for about five or six years on sundays and then they closed down and uh, the simpson boys family took it over about five years ago and went there and revamped the whole place and had that yearly race in the fall yeah called the thunder bay truck center sponsors it and they were very successful first year they had it they had to turn people away they couldn't put any more people on the property you had to park two miles away and walk down the road and it was really successful they never had lights there so they had to start wow. early and, and get finished before dark because they don't get dark about 8.30, 9 o'clock. They were successful. They, they just packed the place. And they, they uh, the last year, or last year when the track opened up, the Nadine's brothers who owned the track hired the Simpsons to run that big three-day race last fall. And it was a record oh, thing. It just... It's been getting bigger and bigger there every week. Good. So a guy that's doing a lot of winning up there, Cole Chernowski. Yeah, uh, he, he does. He does all right. Yeah, he. I uh, think he's got a future of coming down here and winning some races in the states too. Oh yeah, he he was at uh, Grand Rapids last night in both cars. Yeah. And uh, he's doing quite well. Uh, the, the other, well, with Dave Simpson. He, uh, he was here last night at yep. Grand Rapids, and uh, there's a Colin Chaschuk that travels, and uh, there was quite a few. There, last night there was a uh, Carity from Thunder Carity, Bay, Carity, yep. the yellow car, uh, yeah, and uh, Simpson and. Uh, Chernowski had a super stock and a B mod. Yeah. Last night. Yeah. But uh, he, he's doing quite well. He won uh, this summer that he, when they raced with that XR series. Yeah. I think he ended up winning the points. Okay. For that class. Okay. So another guy doing a lot of winning, Shane Sabraski. And we just had a conversation on the One to Go show not too long ago. He crossed over 800 wins. We were wondering how many wins Dick Trickle had, so we kind of put it out there. Someone came back with 1,200 wins over Dick Trickle's lifetime. Do you see a way that Shane Sabraski could possibly get from 800 to 1,200? He seems young okay. enough, but that's a lot that's of wins. A, there's, a, there, there's some discussion of that. Yeah. Shane's wins, don't take nothing away from him, are in two classes. Right. And in a lesser class. Right. Where Trickle's wins were all top of the line, the highest class he could be in late models, asphalt late models. And and so, 
could chain top it. Uh, he's got 400 to go. Right, it's a lot. Probably not. Uh, are they equal? Uh, some, there's just a, there's some discussion saying, well, they're of the lesser class. They shouldn't be as equal. A win's a win in any class. But like I say, it, it, there's discussion. And uh, uh, I don't think that anybody will, will top trickle in uh, the, like, I got what, 757 or something feature wins in one class. Yeah. And uh, I've had a few wins in the Superstock class, just two or three. And I drove a wing modified one summer for a guy in, in uh, Cedar Lake. And I didn't get any wins in that. I did get a few wins in some super stock races, but I don't, I didn't really count that in my total. Yeah. And uh, So do you believe that, so like I said, we just had somebody come. Do you believe that 1200 number for trickle? Does that sound accurate to you? Yeah. He dominated that much? Oh yeah, oh, okay. he, everywhere he went. Okay. Everywhere. And you raced against him? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And he even came to a Menominee and put dirt tires on quite a few years ago and ran his asphalt car. Tom Stiding bought the tires for him and, and uh, I remember racing and near the end of the race he went blowing by me <laughs> with one door missing and on his Mustang, purple Mustang or purple and white at the time. And I think he got third, I'm not sure. But and uh, we were kidding around after races about how I blew the doors off him. But I said, no, no, you, you blew your own doors off because you would buy me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Another person that's done a lot of winning over his lifetime, Donnie Schatz. Now, you know, obviously you're a late model guy, but, you know, you kind of keep an eye on the sprint cars a little bit. Do you think Donnie can get one more title with this young group of guys? I, I, I hate to say this. But he's, he's been, since he went to the Fords, he slowed right down. And and that's probably an economic thing, like Stewart owns everything. And Stewart is probably getting money from Ford to run the Ford Motors. But in my mind, ever since he went back to the, or to the Fords, he hasn't been as dominant. And they're not going to say that because... So the money is what's where the money is in the, the sponsorship yeah. if that's what i think i uh he's he's had a bad or a, not bad but a little bit less less, less lackluster success. with since he's been the ford but the last couple of weeks he's been doing better yeah. a lot better and the late model uh he's average yeah and uh well, like his niece, Eisen, something Yeah, like yeah, yeah. She races out there, yeah. She uh, she went from go-karts last year. She was, and went to the late, late, well, first she went in a sprint car this summer. First woman to win uh, this yeah. and that. And then, and then uh, the... Uh, she did drive the late model. Yeah. I don't really know what she did for uh, how it results. Right, right. All right, I think we're gonna have company here, so I'll ask you just a couple more. Kyle Larson, thoughts? He can drive. <laughs> There's not anything, he's not, he, he can drive anything. If, yeah, have you seen anyone in your time as versatile? Pardon as me? Kyle, have you seen a driver as versatile as Kyle Larson? In your in your over the years, where no, it's midget no. to sprints to late models to whatever. No, I haven't. <laughs> <They're>... <laughs> Come on in. Um, Are you getting interviewed? Doing an interview. Yeah, it's almost over. It's almost over. <laughs> Hang tight. How are you doing, buddy? The uh, yeah, I don't think there you'll ever see another Kyle Larson that can oh. jump into anything. Right. And uh, he's a one of a kind. All right, last question. Another person to do a lot of winning. You got the t-shirt on. Kennedy Swan. So for those of you who don't know, 15-year-old, uh, drives a B-Mod. Uh, just 
I don't know, 90 pounds at best, soaking wet, 80 pounds, I don't know, just this tiny not girl. Not very big, but she's a very smart driver. And her dad knows exactly what to do with the race car. And she, she seems to look ahead or drive to see what's gonna happen in front of her, stay out of trouble. And uh, if she keeps it up, she's gonna go places. I mean, there's people have got their eye on her. Okay. And uh, I heard through the grapevine that they were offered a late model next year. And their dad, Jason said, no, we want an A-Mod. I think that's a mistake. An A-Mod is one of the hardest race cars to drive. A late model is a lot easier to drive than a A-Mod. The next, if I mean, of course, I'm a late model guy, but the she'd get more recognition if she went to a late model, and I think that I think the, the, the move to the A mod is. Uh, I've driven different class of cars, and the hardest car to drive out there is an A mod. Yeah. They have skinny tires, they have the same horsepower as a late model, and they don't turn when you turn the wheel, they don't stop when you step on the brakes, and they don't go when you step on the gas. Actually, a sprint car is a lot easier to drive than a A-Mod, yeah. because a sprint car does exactly what the driver wants. You have to have quick responses to drive a sprint car, a sprint car, but they go when you step on it, they stop when you, and they turn when you want them. The, I think that that uh, she should go to a late model, and uh, but you know they're they're gonna they want to call that a progressive. If you noticed through the years, anybody that was a late model driver, or pardon me, an A mod driver, and jumped in a late model, they were always successful. They were did, they did they come from an A mod, jumped in a late model, they were great in a late model. I think she should miss. Skip the A mod and go right to a late model. Wow. Even if it's a limited, but limited late models, I'm dead set against. Yeah, you said. I think they're shooting themselves in the foot. They run for no money, and the cars cost damn near as much as a as a A mod, A late model. Well, that'll be a good. That's where we'll start off next year. We'll start talking about those those B late models. But um, I know you had told me 20 years ago that you thought that. Uh, uh, you said uh, something to the effect of you wouldn't wish your worst enemy an aim on. So that's where we'll end it. But uh, thanks for your time again. And uh, like I said, we'll catch up again next year, next Labor Day. Okay. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> so, yeah, that would be her. <laughs>